Welcome to episode three of the Life of Christ series. So today we're going to be going a bit further into the story of the birth of Jesus. So as we said at the end of episode two, there are now prophecies circulating about this coming Messiah, about what he's going to be like, about what he's going to stand for, about what his life will accomplish here on earth. And people are anxiously awaiting his arrival. At that time, life for the Israelites was really rough. They were living in poverty. They were under Roman rule. And it was a very heavy, domineering, oppressive situation that they were living in. At that time, for many of the Israelites, their mindset about their coming Messiah was shifting from what they knew in the prophecy that a child would be born to now they're expecting their Messiah to come and to save them from Roman rule. They are expecting that their Messiah will come defeat their Roman enemies and everything will be great after that. However, the, the Lord's coming was so much more than that. The Lord was coming not only to defeat their physical enemies, but to defeat their spiritual adversary, the devil, the serpent from the garden. So we read that magi, wise men, astrologers from the east are studying the movement of the stars and the planets in line with the coming Messiah. Now, although this part of the story happens after the birth of the Messiah, it's important as it leads up to his birth. He is worried, he is shook, and he doesn't quite know what to expect. Herod is looking for a man who is going to come and kick him off of his throne, but he's looking in the wrong place because the prophecies prophesy of a child being born, a son being given. Now, when the Magi speak to Herod and inform him that it's actually a baby that they're coming to worship, all of a sudden his game plan changes. And that's when we read about the wailing and the crying in Rama, Rachel crying for her children because they are not. And that is speaking of when Herod killed all the children of two years and younger in an attempt to try to kill the Messiah. So there is so much action in this part of the story. For those of you who like action movies, this is one of those parts where it's like high speed chases, it's rooftops, it's all this stuff. I do want you guys to notice that that part of the story happens when Jesus is about two years old. The Bible says that when Magi came into the house where he was, they fell down and worshipped him and gave gifts to his parents. So we see that they're no longer in the stable. I know that a lot of the Christian movies and Christmas movies want to portray it that way, I guess for the sake of TV. But according to the scriptures, Jesus is about two years old. They are already moved away from the whole Bethlehem scene, the stable scene, and they are in a house uh, where Jesus is found and they come and worship him there. Hence why Herod looks for children two years of age and younger and not two days old and younger. Yeah, I hope that so this has got you guys excited for the final, the fourth and final episode of this part of the Life of Christ series. So next week, we are going to be talking about the fulfillment of these prophecies of God's redemption plan, this portion of God's redemption plan for us, his people. I pray that this video has been a blessing to you. If it has, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content on this channel, please consider subscribing. Be sure to come back next week for episode four of the Life of Christ series. And until then, remember you are too blessed to be stressed. Take care and God bless. Bye.